this is the fourth section of the further kinematics chapter on differentiating vectors now we can differentiate vectors um, so if we have a vector for displacement we can differentiate that and we can get a vector for velocity and we can differentiate that and we can get a vector for acceleration now i just need to introduce some notation now quite often when we're dealing with vectors we use r to represent um, displacement and to show velocity we do an r with a dot above it and an r with two dots above it to represent um, acceleration so this is like a the notation we use when we are showing uh, what we're doing with uh, vectors and again we can integrate and go backwards now you know when you integrate it introduces a constant but when you introduce the constant this time the constant is made up of an i part and a j part so when i integrate acceleration for example to get the velocity vector I'm going to have um, not just plus C, but C, I, and I need another letter, say D, J. So my constant of integration is made up of two parts, um, the I part and the J part. We'll do an example so you can see what I mean. Okay, so let's say that we had um, a displacement vector which was 3t squared minus t i um, plus 7t cubed minus 3j and we want to find a velocity vector which would write like this so to differentiate it what you do is you differentiate the i part and you write it down so you're differentiating with respect to t so i suppose you could write r as um let's put it here uh, d r dt yeah so the vector r differentiated with respect to t so if we differentiate what's in the brackets we'll have 6 t minus 1 so that's the i part and then you just differentiate the j part so that would give you uh, 21 t squared j okay so that's um differentiation what if i was integrating so what if i had an acceleration vector uh, which was um, let's make it the same thing that we had there 3 t squared minus t i plus 7 t cubed minus 3j so let's integrate that and see what we get so let's get the velocity vector so uh, 3t squared that would become t cubed the minus t would become uh, minus half t squared i then the 7 t cubed would become 7 over 4 t to the 4 and a negative 3 would become negative 3 t j now we then put plus c i plus d j so can you see this two parts to our actual constant of integration so we could write our answer if we put the um the constant uh, the i part and the j part with the rest we, we could have something like t cubed minus half t squared plus c our constant i plus 7 over 4 t to the 4 minus 3 t squared uh, 3 t sorry plus d j yeah so here you can see our our constant there and it'd normally be something in the question 
that would allow us to work out what that constant is before we would then maybe uh, integrate that again uh, to find a displacement. A particle of mass 0.8 uh, kilograms is acted on by a single force F relative to fixed origin O. The position vector of P at time t seconds meters is given by this. So this is the position displacement vector, um, sorry, position vector. T is always positive. Find the speed of P when T equals four. So we're doing part A. So if we want to find uh, the speed, we first need to find the velocity vector. So we need to differentiate the I part. So that'd be six T squared I. And then that will be minus 25 uh, T to the minus three over two J. So that's our velocity vector. And we want to find out what the value of that um, at T equals four. So we just substitute four in. So we'll have six times uh, four squared I minus 25 times four to the power minus three over two J. So let's work out what those two uh, parts are. Um, so that's going to be six times 16. I'll need a calculator for that, six times 16, which is 96. So 96 I and then 25 times four to the power of negative, sorry, let's turn it in four to the power of negative at three over two, which is 25 over eight, 3.125. So let's write that as 25 over eight, minus 25 over eight J. The speed is going to be the magnitude of that. So the magnitude of this vector, which is going to be the square root of 96 squared plus at minus 25 over eight all squared. What does that give us? Let's type that in square root 96 squared plus in brackets, negative 25 over eight close bracket squared and we get 96.0508 three significant figures 96.1 so 96.1 meters per second okay so um, we uh, differentiated to change the uh, position vector into a velocity vector we plugged in the number four to find out the speed at time four, uh, sorry, the velocity at time four. And then we did Pythagoras on that to work out the uh, speed from the velocity. Now we could also work out the direction if we did uh, tan inverse on those numbers, did a, did a diagram first, we could then work out the direction, the bearing of it as well. Right, part B. The acceleration of P as a vector when T equals two. Okay, so um, we'll need to differentiate again. So that will give us now the six T, T squared becomes 12 T I. And then the negative 25 we need to times that by negative three over two. So that's 75 over two plus 75 over two. So plus 75 over two T and then the power becomes minus five over two. So there's our acceleration. Um, so all we need to do at t equals two, we plug in two. 
so the acceleration will become 12 times 4 sorry not 4 2 this time 12 times 2 i plus 75 over 2 times by 2 to the power minus 5 over 2 j okay let's see what that gives us so we get 24i and then plus it's not a nice number 6.63 to three significant figures j okay so i'll just put down there that's three significant figures um, now it says leave the acceleration as a vector so we leave it in that form there and then we'll go on to part c find f when c at t equals 2 so this is f equals ma right so we know the acceleration uh, which is what we've got there and um, we need to times it by the um, mass which is 0 0.8 so it's going to be 0 0.8 times by the acceleration now we need to change the acceleration um, well we can change it into a scalar and uh, give our answer the force as, as a scalar um, or we can just leave it as a vector so we'll leave it as a vector so that means that the force is going to be a vector so that means it tells us we can work out the magnitude and direction of that force so 24 times 0 0.8 25 times or 24 times 0 0.8 that gives us 19.2 i and we'll do the 6.63 times that by 0 0.8 and that gives us 5.30 so plus 5.30 j here we go so that is the force f equals ma right you should now be able to do exercise 8d on pages 171 to 173